right, so we have a special guest here, AJ Ocasio. AJ, what's up, man? Welcome, hey, dude. man. This, this is the first time you, you're on our on our show, man. Yes. No, yeah. I've only been on your real life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a couple times. A couple times, yeah. Guest starring on your real life. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So for those that don't know, AJ, you, I know you have a long list of projects you worked on in the past. I know recently <laughs> uh, you're, you're playing as uh, Gambit, the new X-Men Crazy. 97 series, by the way amazing show by the way it's so good so, it's so, so good, good. <laughs> i have nothing to do with the writing but i i will say not to it, when i read the first script i was like you guys nailed it like i went into this is even before my audition i like went in and spoke to whoever was there on the zoom because i was auditioning in a studio but it was i was just like you guys nailed it like i'm not trying to say this to get the part i'm like this is insane like i had goosebumps the whole time so mm-hmm. i'm glad they they were able to t- you know Taking something from a script to production and having it land still is like such an achievement. But yeah, so good. Yeah, and I know that you worked on not only TV shows. I I believe you also worked on a couple of video games too, and I've seen uh, yes <laughs> a couple of lists there. Actually, most recently was uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which yes. is a fantastic, fantastic game too, man. Uh, but let's let's talk about the first time we met. So <laughs> we we got we have a, a couple of mutual friends that we went out and we were we were hanging out there. And we were sit- we were at a restaurant, I believe, uh, while we were eating, taking a break from walking around and everything. And I looked at AJ. I'm like, man, you look so familiar. I don't know <laughs> from where. <laughs> and and you you be like, oh yeah, I'm like wait a minute, were you involved with Back to the Future the game with so Delta funny. Games? Which uh, was that your first project ever? Yeah, that you? was it. That was my very very first thing, which is so strange because before that, it's like I went to film school and. Mm-hmm. Was doing doing impressions for friends and stuff, and yeah. uh, is my mic too loud or am I okay? I just realized. I, no, you're, you're good. Can, pretty I can, high. I can, okay, okay, I can, I can fix it. Like, um, but I, I do uh, hear, I do hear myself sometimes. I think because you have your headphones like this. Oh, I so I can hear. I could put one, that... two, one, two. See, I don't hear myself anymore. Oh, crazy! <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, yeah, so go ahead. Oh, sorry. So yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I I was in. Uh, film school up and you know until before that and uh and then i had like a year off and i saw the press thing uh where they were like doing a back to the future video game and a bunch of people reached out like did you see this and i was like yeah that's really cool and then my cousin johnny was like you should audition and i was like i don't i don't have a resume i don't have an agent i don't have anything um and then he was like no you should really audition i was like okay so i like went and found the website uh, with Telltale Games, it's just had people's phone numbers. This is like back in the day where you'd put your own phone number on your YouTube video, you know, where mm-hmm. that was like a thing and it was okay. Um, so I just called them up and left a message and they were like, hey, can you send it an MP3? And uh, I don't know if you've heard this story. You can stop me oh, if yeah. it's boring. No, no, it's all good. No, keep it up. <laughs> Except there's a lot of people that probably don't know. That's I feel like it. I've told it so many times that I know that it's, it's arrogant to think like everyone's heard this, but... Um, yeah, I just left a message and they said, can you audition and send an MP3? So I did and then didn't hear anything back. And then like three months later, they're like, hey, can you audition one more time? And I was like, I thought you forgot about me. And uh, and then I got it and it was weird and crazy. And I stopped eating for like a week and a half because I was so nervous. And uh, yeah, wild, absolutely wild. <laughs> yeah. So ever since you made that move and started uh, working on that project, that's when all the other projects started coming up. Let's slowly Not at all. Because, uh, <laughs> or, or, what, or it took like some time, yeah, some definitely. time to to get those extra gigs and stuff like that, right? Yeah, because people were like, "Oh, cool, you did like a Marty McFly impression. That's nice." And uh, that's how I met our friend Elise. As I was working as an editor at Game Trailers for like two or three years after the Marty thing, because I was just, I think people have this assumption that if you do one thing, you're like set, you know, <laughs> where it's like, you know, you make like eight hundred bucks off a video game, and it's like, well, okay, I need to eat again, you know. Um, but I, yeah, it took a while to get an agent and to sort of prove that I could do more than just an impression of Michael J. Fox. So Mm -hmm. yeah, the, certainly the roles weren't coming in. Uh, but I was lucky that after like two or three years, I was on the show, the crudes, and then that sort of became the stepping stone for more things. But, uh, yeah, even still, I don't just get, I don't get offers. I, I I audition like everyone else. Yeah, that's, that's cool, man. But let's talk about how you managed to get this, uh, X-Men 97 gig, man, because that's. (laughs) <laughs> that is wild. First of all, when I heard the the, the announcement about this series, I, I love the old the old series from back in the nineties and stuff. Same. Um, what, how the pressure of of like auditioning of this because <laughs> yeah, that's an iconic iconic that one and Batman the old nineties Batman yeah that was like to me was like the most iconic anime animated uh, cartoons from back then. 
from like Marvel and stuff like that. Um, how was that process of terrifying auditioning to that? What you, do you audition as that character, or you had like audition to like other characters before getting this gambit opportunity? Yeah, so it's weird because okay, so they sent us like a packet of like twenty different characters, and mm-hmm. they were all under fake names. But of course, I immediately was like, "Oh, okay, that's Cyclops, that's Rogue, that's you know." Yeah. But um, they it was only it was thinly veiled because they basically had the the names uh, and then some lines and then voice reference, and the voice reference was just a direct YouTube link to like this is what we want for gambit or wolverine or and they had everyone it wasn't like they just were like "Mm, we got the original voice actors like we all had to audition but Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i which is not something i would ever recommend only auditioned for gambit because he was the only one i like i was like if i'm gonna be part of an x-men thing which Mm -hmm. is obviously huge you'd want to be anything in x-men it's like yes make me any part of x-men i was just like i just want to be gambit (laughs) which is so I would never recommend anyone do that. It's always, you know, I've been in other things where it's like, oh, I'd love to be Spider-Man, but I'll gladly play, you know, Harry Osborn, whatever it is. Not that I've done that, but, you know, uh, but yeah, that was basically, I just sat with that audition and listened to Chris Potter stuff over and over again and, and did it like a million times and then just sent it away. You know, it was the kind of thing where you just, it's like a t-shirt can and where you just fire it off into the audience and go, I hope someone got it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was an extremely blase sort of like, there it goes. <laughs> so there was nothing special. I didn't like call the producers or anything. It was, it was just like everyone else. I stood in line. That That's crazy, man. And, it's crazy. And, and how long it took the process for them to call you back? The team. Uh, I want to say, a, I want to say at least a month, maybe a couple months. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause hey, you just, you fire it off and then they listen to hundreds or thousands of, of auditions. Cause as far as I'm aware, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a closed audition process, like for Han Solo stuff. I know I was on like a very small list. And then that's how I started doing those was just like, all right, we've got like 20 people or whatever. But with this, it was just everyone everywhere um, was auditioning for it, which now that I say that out loud, makes me feel sick to my stomach. But uh, yeah. <laughs> it's terrifying. Wait, you but, said Han Solo, that that was for like the Lego Star Wars one or, or the other yeah, projects? I've done a bunch of different. Um, so for Han, I did like Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, that one that came out last year. Yeah. Um, where I got to do Young and Old Han, which was insane. And uh, mm-hmm. I've done a bunch of Star Wars like specials that are on Disney Plus and then Force Awakens or not Force Awakens, sorry. Uh, Forces of Destiny was like these little shorts on YouTube and, and Disney Plus. And yeah, but that, that's cool. That's cool. It's it, crazy. Man. Yeah, man, like that, and it started all. It started because of the Michael J. Fox, Marty McFly, and look at all yeah. these uh, iconic characters. Of which Marty McFly is also an iconic oh, character yeah, too. But like, sure. oh, it, it is, it is crazy seeing the list of stuff that you've done, man. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't believe it. You know, I don't. I because j- these are, they're not like, yeah. oh yeah, I did a character. Like these are things I'm obsessed with. You know, like these are. Sure. Because sure. even like I was lucky to do just a little. I did a video game uh, as Figment. I don't know. Do you know Figment from uh, Jer- like this guy? Uh, this is one of my childhood toys. Is is Figment from? Oh yes, yes, yeah, I remember. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and yeah. that was like an obsession for me as a kid. I was so fascinated by his voice, and and even before the auditions for that came up, I had already mm-hmm. worked on a Figment voice match, and so I just when that eventually came up, I was like, oh. This is something I've been doing in my closet for fun, you know, and it's like, yeah, so these are things I'm just, there's like 10 voices at some point I'll plateau where it's like, well, that's everyone, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I don't know everyone I've done an impression of, um, but it's, it's very lucky that these things are, are getting sort of revitalized and rejuvenated because these are things I'm obsessed with. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's very weird. No, that's awesome. Was there any, out of all the stuff that you worked on, was there one character was like the most difficult one for you to to do voiceover on that one difficult uh oh, difficult I mean, or like stressful like oh my gambit. god this, I, I mean gambit's definitely gambit? the most stressful because he's mm-hmm. you're sort of straddling the line between what chris potter had done in the original which is his own kind of thing and then what mm-hmm. does a cajun accent sound like and what is what is the modern expectations of what a cajun character should sound like so sort of walking that tightrope between what came before and how people hear them in their head with also trying to incorporate like, um, di- or not dialogue, but phrases and little things that are from Cajun culture or trying to get that in there. And, you know, some things don't make it or things get edited and stuff, but just trying to bring as much vocabulary uh, as I can to that is, is stressful. You know, it's a whole section of people in the world that are 
listening to that and going, that's not right. Um, so mm-hmm. that stresses me out. Plus, also just, it's Gambit. We all grew up hearing Gambit. It's something that, you know, like Kevin Conroy's Batman or something, you just know it. And anything that's not that is going to be disappointing. You just want to hear that again. So that's the unfortunate position I keep, and fortunate position I keep thrusting myself into, where people are comparing you to something that is def- that is the definitive version, uh, is always a lot of stress with Marty or Han or any of that stuff. It's just, yeah, it's it's a lot of a lot of pressure. When you work on a project like this, do you usually record at a studio, at a different studio, or you usually work on on recording everything from home on on a project like this or in other projects? It depends. I mean, for this, I was, I think, all in studio. I kind of hate recording from home because then I got to mess with the tech and and adjust the levels and stuff. Even this, I'm like, is my microphone too hot? Um, But yeah, yeah, this was, I think, entirely in studio, studio, thankfully, because we started... We were sort of starting it right as like COVID was kind of like, all right, you can come into a studio, but you have to like wear a bag on your head and like, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. someone has to hose you down as you go in. Um, And so, yeah, I think all of X-Men was in studio, uh, but some of the other stuff like Crudes and I worked on the Uncharted movie as like Tom Holland's voice double was like almost all in my closet and Spider-Man stuff. And yeah, I've done a bunch of weird, all throughout the pandemic, I was in my closet being like, all right, this is going to. So if you watch Uncharted, there's voiceover from me as Tom Holland from my really? closet. <laughs> I've been like flying yeah. around and yeah, same with Spider-Man where it's just like, oh, I did some just little background dubs and stuff for him. And, uh, and it's like, oh, that was me in my closet. It's just really weird. Yeah, I was going to ask you that question because sometimes sometimes voice actors are not allowed to say those things and some are, are okay that, yeah, you could talk about it. So about the was closet that, or <laughs> no, not the closet, but more of like, oh, I've done, you know, stuff for like Uncharted, the the movie or, or you know, stuff like that. I don't like know that. if I'm allowed to say it, to be honest, but no one ever said don't say it. I mean, it's it's kind of like an open secret that there are times where an actor is unavailable. And so and it's just it's just logistics where it's like, yeah, they're they're so busy that it's like we just need someone to make this oof for this like, hey, look out. And it's not there's nothing. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um deceptive about it other than it's like we just need to fill this in for the edit you know and we we couldn't track this person down so that's why with voice matchers we'll often there's like weird things i'm done like where there's a character in transformers where it's just like they're falling off a cliff or whatever it's just like all right sure yeah um because it's not like you're really doing a performance you're just inserting a noise on their behalf yeah um yeah (laughs) <laughs> and do you change the voice or they add like special effects on that to make it like the, during the mix down? Oh, I mean, you're just sound, doing, you're doing a sound. voice match. So hopefully it just sounds, you know, Similar. You're, you're doing a press, an impression essentially. But with voice matching, it's like there's impressions which are like a broad, you know, you're kind of doing a broad version of someone. But with voice matching, it's supposed to like sonically sound exactly like them. So you do... We'll often do a pretty lengthy process of matching the voices and then um, you'll, you know, and then so hopefully when you go in, they're just, they're like, we'll do that, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm, do mm-hmm. Tom Holland or Chris Pratt or whoever I'm doing and, uh, and you know, in whatever situation they're in. Yeah. So I know you worked on a lot of video games and, and, and like TV shows, movies and stuff like that. Which one do you think has been like the, <laughs> the most exciting out of all of it? Like the, from the gaming side? The TV or movie side for you? That's like, which one has been, like, your favorites so far? That's t- well, okay, so, like, physical experience, like, joy of, like, being there was God of War, for sure, because it was, like, some of my closest friends now are from working on God of War, because I was involved in that process long before I was involved in it, like, as a character. So, because mm-hmm. I was basically standing in for Kratos and Atreus and other characters as they were developing the story and blocking the scenes and stuff, and... Mm-hmm. It was a lot of just me with the previous team and some other friends just sort of rolling around in mocap suits and sorting things out. Because that game, Ragnarok, has a lot of one camera shots, or it is, it's all one shot. And so it's just sort of like this boot camp of fun. It's not even like, how do I say this? Like, it's not glorious in the sense that it's like, ah, yes, I am an actor. It's just rough and tumble and fun. And so the joy in that, because I'd rather... I love creating things, and so getting to talk about, like, okay, well, if the mermaid's up here, I should be down here, and then when I look over here, you know, this guy's eight feet tall, so I have to hand the box up here, but he's actually seven f- or three feet tall in real life, so there's a lot of, like, fun and games with that sort of stuff, and, and Jedi uh, Survivor I worked on for a long time, and there was the same sort of thing. It's all behind the scenes, just kind of, 
you know, playing with lightsabers and now you're a Jawa and now you're mm-hmm. Cal- I, I did like all of Cal Kestis's previous stuff. And so it's just fun. I mean, I'm like moving a baseball bat around like I got a lightsaber. So yeah, the physical joy of getting to do that stuff is, is unparalleled. But then outside of that, I mean, for video games doing um, Lego Star Wars was was just an absolute surreal highlight because I was recreating all of Harrison Ford's iconic lines, which talk about pressure. But uh, the 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 greatest and this is like a self pat on the back. The greatest thing that uh, happened to me was there was a few times where they would play the reference. And then so like they play a clip of Harrison Ford in the movie and then I would do my version of it. And there was a handful of times where my buddy Matt Wood, who was the director, was just like, all right, AJ, go ahead, do it. And I was like, I just did it. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, that was me on the third one or the fourth, you know, whatever it is. And he was like, I thought it was just playing the reference over and over again. I'm like, yes. See, that happened that, a handful that's how you of know, times. Yeah, that's, yeah. How you know, that's how I know that, like, okay, this guy killed him. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, like, what a compliment. And the same thing happened with my agent where there was a, for, for older Han Solo, she sent me on audition and I sent my MP3 back and she was like, hey, honey, you sent me the reference. Um, and I was like, no, nah, that's me. <laughs> and that's I was like, that's sick. awesome. I was like, there that's also sick. was no reference file for that specific thing. So I was like, yes, that's awesome. So that was, but just as far as like joyfulness, that was such a fun, silly, because Lego also is, who doesn't love Lego? It's oh, so, everybody loves Lego. And know, those games are fun. Like, they're it's just so like, much fun. It's the perfect game to play with, like with like family, everybody getting together locally and just play yeah. with it. It's, it's great. It I, crosses I, all generations in a way that so few things do. And yeah, I'm obsessed with Lego. And I've gotten to do, if you go to like Lego, uh, Legoland, I'm Emmett in all the rides. And like, you can get like a phone call from Emmett, like, hey, everyone, wake up. Like, so I'm like deeply entrenched in Lego in a way that I'm obsessed with. Yeah, I, I know there's a lot of upcoming voice actors that, you know, they they want to start, you know, getting opportunities like this. And 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 look, I'm not saying for you to, to call a, a studio and just have a voice, a, Don't leave do a that. voice message. <laughs> <laughs> That's like on hold up, honestly. Uh, but what advice you would give them, like for those that you know want to get these type of opportunities, you know, what what are the things that you think will be helpful for them to to stand out? Because there's there's so many talented voice actors out there, you know. Yeah, it's hard because I, I mean, I'm the worst person to ask because the way I got into it was so unconventional. But um, I think that it really just comes down to acting. You need to know how to act, which is such a key component to all of this is people are like, I got a silly voice. And I'm like, "Eh," you know, or even just doing impressions like Mm -hmm. you can do a Rick and Morty impression or, you know, Peter Griffin all day. But like if you can't take material or like written words and find a million ways to do it and, and make it feel alive, it's just not going to matter. And that's something that I feel like people consistently overlook. Because um, so mm-hmm. many people make those like TikTok videos and YouTubes where they're just doing the lines from the thing, which is impressive in its own way. But it's like the thing people are really looking for is if you can do your own stuff or like do, you know, take those kinds of characters and maybe mesh them into something. Take yoda and jeff goldblum and put them together to you know like take these things and and make your own stuff out of it so but i guess advice wise i would say make a reel you know like less than a minute long that's what agents are looking for um and and find what's unique about your own voice we all have a like my voice my talking voice sucks like as far as how it just i just (laughs) sound like great it sounds great does it i i feel like my i hate my own talking voice and i don't there's nothing miraculous about it but Mm-hmm. I've figured out ways to move it around and place it. And that's a big thing is like learning what's unique about your sound um, and and using that. I mean, there's plenty of voice actors who just figured out a sound and then mm-hmm. they use that for everything. And uh, and it's it's that is totally viable. But also a, another big thing is just don't be weird. You know, like that's a weird. It's a, mm-hmm. it, like, don't be weird or creepy or there's so many people that are too aggressive or too they want to be noticed so bad and it's like let your talent speak for itself and and i know that there there's a certain amount of wanting to stand out but you can also put yourself in a position where people are kind of scared of you or freaked out and i mm. feel like that's something people don't really talk about is you have to also be a person people want to work with and so being kind and not being overly assertive about your like look at what i could do i could do it like all right, you know, people have to work with you for years, possibly. So you just got to make sure that you're also maintaining a, a you're a nice person is kind of, I guess, what I'm getting at. 
mm-hmm. um, is is another thing that's underestimated is just just be kind and people should want to grab coffee with you and be like, I really like you. Um, at least that's what I aspire to or hope for is people are like, oh, we're we're into the same stuff as opposed to being like, hey, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a monologue of here's a thousand voices in one second. And it's like, oh, all right, I, I want to go home. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there um, any projects that you will love to be part of that of things like you you heard in the background, you know, like things that might be popping up, like the, the, you, they're you're allowed to to talk. about? I don't but. know. Um, Cause it, it looks like you're always getting something. <laughs> it's always thank getting you. Something. I'm glad that that appears that way. Well, because it's so yeah. wild. Because it's like, yeah, you the illusion of that is 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 not lost on. I guess it's not lost on me because I. Like Gremlins, like I've done recording that like years ago and it's like we're still waiting for season two to come out. So for me, it's a couple weeks of work or a couple days and then it disappears for a long time and then it comes back. And so there's this illusion of that. But um, I mean, for me, honestly, just I love doing motion capture. It's like the most fun I've ever had acting. And so Mm -hmm. getting to do something um, in that vein, that's maybe my own character, like doing a skill door on God of War was so much fun because um my my buddy eric and uh matt who were the, the writers and directors were just like just cast aj as his character and i was like what because i've been around That's them cool. for so long and we were friends and they were like just make him the character and so i got to there were when i asked them, i was like what do you guys want me to do with this guy mm-hmm. they were like just be you and i was like oh okay <laughs> no, that's um, cool. that's but doing cool. more stuff like that obviously i'm obsessed with like the rocketeer and indiana jones i would love to do something with those guys but there's not anything i'm hearing about um with them but uh yeah, Imagineering stuff. I love Imagineering. Anything I could do with them, I'm always like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But I just feel fortunate to be, I mean, Gambit right now is my my main focus where I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> oh, this is the best. And, and let me it's ask so you this. Crazy. Like, when, when you started recording this, did you get to see the video of the actual, of the series like while recording? Or is there oh, something no, like not that? at all. <laughs> or it's more of like, read a script, go with this, and they'll tell you what, what to do, right? Like, yeah, so, totally. So, so when you got to see the final product is when they did like a press tour or something like that, or premiere. That was, it was the first somewhere time in the it. middle because it's okay. So there's we just we do the script. Basically, what the wild thing to me is, uh, what mm-hmm. you hear in the first episode or two is my audition, which is crazy. What? So like really? Di- yeah, what? which is really really bizarre. I know we did pickups and stuff. I'm I know not all of it is. There was like a moment where he throws the beignet and stuff. That's like. Uh, That some of that was pickups, but like I went in, did the audition for the first two episodes, and then they were like, All right, you got it. And I lost my mind and, you know, ran around the house and, you know, like our apartment. I was just like, Ah. But then when I went back in, I was like, All right, now let's record it. And they were like, We're moving on. And I was like, What do you mean? And they basically used my audio from the, from my audition, which was uh, insane to me. It wasn't the audition I sent in, but the one I did in studio, like the callback. And so I was like, okay, are you sure? Um, but I guess it worked. And uh, <laughs> it's, but anyway, to answer your question, I, I, there's no, there's no visuals up front other than I got to see the art, which they showed me like very cheekily. They were like, this is what he looks like. And I was like, wait, no. So I only got like a very brief blurry mm-hmm. uh, picture of him. And then like a year or two later, maybe I got to see some sort of close to final animation, but not the full thing. Um, this is one of the longest shows I've ever worked on as far as like time to take animation because it's so beautiful and so rich. Um, mm-hmm. same with, uh, Voltron it took a very long time to get animated. Love Voltron, by the way. Yeah, I'm obsessed job on with that Voltron. One. You Thank you. That yeah. One. Yeah. It's funny. Like my brain, I totally forgot that I was like, oh yeah, I'm on Voltron too. That show is, I love that show so much. But uh, I don't even know if I answered your question. I I, no, 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 and I get it. <laughs> I, I was, yeah, because I was, I just been curious about that too, man. Like, because when when they mentioned, oh, when uh, Disney said, okay, we're bringing back X Men '97, even though voice acting back in the '90s is very different than now. So yeah, you had to learn from that, for like the '90s style, right? To, yeah. To, so you can make it, you know, similar to like the one from back in the days. So that's all I was wondering. If you got to see the animation, did, did that help and stuff like that? That's always very curious about that. It's a know? it's a weird. It's funny because, um, yeah, there's definitely like there's a Shakespearean theatrical aspect to the original characters, which so works with the the tone and the broadness of the like what they're dealing with. But yeah, mm-hmm. kind of trying to find the middle ground between. I mean, luckily Gambit's always absurd and always kind of this fun, ridiculous character that 
Mm-hmm. He's 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 kind of set in stone. There's not there's not too much you can do to make Gambit uh different, or I wouldn't want to. But with like Cyclops, I know with Ray, they had a whole thing where they were trying to figure out the right balance of like Boy Scout and serious. And uh, I think him and like Jennifer Hale, who does Jean Grey, sort of nails the tone of it's more than it's not grounded in the way that you would imagine like a serious, serious film. There's more to it that I feel like you have to figure out and understand what's too much, what's just right. And I, I mean, it's incredible to, to listen to them. You know, the more serious characters like Gene and Scott, they're grounded, but there's this elevatedness that fits so well with the original series, but is also kind of modern. And it's uh, same with Jubilee. Jubilee, Holly, who does Jubilee, I feel like nails it where it's Mm -hmm. she's still Jubilee, but there's a she's more grounded in a way that is is again, it's not about the performance so much as our, our modern sensibilities, like where if you watch a performance from the 50s, it's so great for the time, but there's a different kind of way people hold themselves. And in mm-hmm. the 30 years, we've, you know, things feel a little different. Like Spider-Man, you think about like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man versus Spider-Man now, just a totally different tone and style of acting that is uh, felt real at the time, but now is its own thing. And it's great, but it's it's different. Yeah, no, th- definitely, definitely. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna ma- mention too, man, like seeing the reviews when it first popped up, I'm like, oh my Nuts. God, this is... <laughs> this is this is the highest that I've seen of any show from from Disney Plus so far. That's that crazy! It's crazy. And I, I and I even I was talking this to uh, my co-host Paris. He wanted to be here too. He's a huge fan of the X Men two show. Oh, like I'm he, sorry, we, I'm sorry. Get me. <laughs> yeah, he, hopefully you could meet him one day. But uh, yeah, we we also uh, you know I remember when Voltron came out, we were always calling each other up like, "Yo, the they, they you know what? That's awesome. Was, yeah, we love it. We love it. Oh, but dude, anyways, that's so cool. I didn't realize that. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah. That's that's super cool. Oh, yeah. Dude, I have the original uh, DVD series from like the old 80s Voltron. So I still have that. That's amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah. So this is cool. That's no, I was, so I was going to so say, good. like, I put this show up there with with two other shows that I love, which is WandaVision and also Loki series. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So seeing, oh, dude, the, that's re- awesome. seeing the reviews from from like the fans and also from the media high high scores when they came out how how, how was like your reaction seeing the, all this man from it's it's it a happened. relief it's such a funny thing because you're like oh my god thank god they love it they get it the team nailed it because i knew at the time i was like this is really good i was like if people don't like this i'm gonna be so confused about what my own taste is you know <laughs> like because yeah, i yeah and i'd only gotten to see snippets but i was like god this is good um and it's surprising because you don't you know, you never know. I mean, you read a script, you see animatics, you see things through the process, and you never know how things will change. I mean, that's so common in mm-hmm. media where someone has a great idea and it gets turned into something that's totally not what they wanted. And you hear directors talk about it all the time. But um, the fact that it made it through and it's so good is not only... It's two things. It's like, holy crap, thank God, but also all right, now we got to maintain this. And, you know, thankfully I'm not in any position to write. I don't voice actors are weird because we're basically like the last ones to show up but i feel like to some degree we get the most almost undeserved praise where it's like yeah all i do is is this and um then i disappear i i don't ever really get to meet the writers and stuff which is a shame but uh they're the ones that have all the pressure on them and from what i know uh i i'm hoping people will be pretty pleased because it is like talking about a labor of love doesn't even cut it like it's it's a labor of insanity because it's so it, it, I, I I don't even know how to say it, but like there's Easter eggs that are not even Easter eggs. They're just they understand every fiber of it and the connective tissue of from like the Jean Grey's doll, the Cyclops doll, the fact that she has that again in the newest episode. And that's something she had in the original series. Like it's it goes beyond Easter egg. It's just attention and love and reverence for what came before in a way that's not trying to show you an easter egg it's just yeah that is that is what it is <laughs> I, I don't even know what i'm saying it's just yeah, so man. good they're so yeah, good it's so they're good such a great job it's crazy yeah I, let me tell you like i, I love the, the the first three episodes i can't wait uh, actually every is it is it what every wednesday every thursday or is it, i think it's every wednesday wednesday, wednesday or yeah. for me at midnight uh on on uh, at tuesday at midnight is where i'm like i'm up you know yeah yeah so i, I watch it with what with my wife and we, you know we're we loving this show man it's oh, that's so awesome. it's so so good man props to you it's, man it's, and it's uh, a ride it's a ride it's it's funny too to see because i know obviously what's going on people being upset about certain things I'm like oh i hope this doesn't happen or i hope this happens and people speculating and i'm just like 
kind of grinning like an idiot where I'm like, man, this is as someone who watched like Game of Thrones and all that stuff. You're you're making all these theories, but I, I now kind of see a little bit of what's going to happen. And it's so fun to watch people be happy and upset. And, con- you know, it's all these reactions that you want out of an audience where it's like they believe it. You know, it's so it's so cool. Again, nothing to do with the writing, but <laughs> it's a small piece of this. Yeah. It's yeah. so exhilarating. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, do you, like, I'm, and you don't have to say fully, but like, when, when you work on a prize like this, you don't know about the other character. You only know about your character, right? So yeah. there's probably stuff when you're watching, like, oh my God, I didn't know that was going to happen, right? Like, while watching the first three episodes, was, yeah, was for that sure. like, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, was, I didn't know anything about, um, uh, Madeline Pryor with, like, cause that whole thing, I'm not involved in that at all. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's bits and pieces, but as far as like when Scott and, and all them go off to, uh, Sinister's, mansion um i didn't know any about anything about that they're very because of the nature of the show and because of how high profile it is it, it's also very very protected so there are things in you know if i'm not in an episode i don't really know what happens because they're not going to just send me that script um so it's 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 same thing with voltron too is the same way where it was like yeah i wouldn't i would be surprised <laughs> by things i'm like oh i didn't know they were going to a mall um because like lotor wasn't in the mall at all so yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's as a fan too it's really cool to not know everything because i certainly don't want to know everything i want to be surprised too yeah that's good that's good yeah i was gonna ask man um, imagine knowing everything you're like oh man i can't even watch this i know i always feel bad for like i feel like uh mark hamill would love star wars if he wasn't in star wars and i know he does love star wars but not in the same way like if he was just a fan he would sure. be the biggest nerd for Star Wars. And I feel like he was sort of robbed in some ways of getting to have that experience of getting to watch Star Wars without being involved. Um, so I feel lucky that I don't have to have that problem. I could just watch it and be like, this is great. It's like reading a comic or watching the original show. Yeah. Well, well my last question, I know probably the, the fans, uh, you know, the listening to this, oh, they're wondering is, you know, while taking a break from, from work, working all the time, is there anything that you've been playing like uh, gaming wise for you or what? Uh, yeah, on and off, I've kind of, man, it's Lies of P took over my life. Um, oh, great game. I, great I know. game. Did you play it? Okay, James and I were obsessed, uh, where it was like, it got to the point where we both platinumed it because we were sort of like, like toxically egging each other on to just keep going with, you know, it was just like, mm-hmm. dude, did mm-hmm. you get this? Oh, I didn't get all the records. Um, so then, yeah, I got to like my four and a half playthrough or something like that. And I finally got the last record and I was like, okay. Nice. I'm done. But then I heard there was DLC, and I was like, "No, yes." <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, so that's the one that you've been playing the the most recently, or yeah, I wouldn't say okay. So that's not the most recent, but it's my biggest obsession. And then mm-hmm. uh, I've been playing this game called The Last Faith, uh, which is like a 2D side scroller Metroidvania that I've kind of been in and out of. Um, and then what else? Yeah, I tried playing the first Psychonauts um because that's james's like favorite game of all time and he's always talking about it so i was like all right i'll, ch- I'll try this uh which is cute i love me a like ps1 style game mm-hmm. uh, i'm trying to think of what, that's kind of it i've mostly been working on stuff at night or we're watching buffy for the first time <laughs> so yeah that's been you. my like nighttime you. thing is like oh put buffy on and we'll yeah that's good. Uh, that's good. Now, AJ, I just want to say, man, thank you for for doing this. I know this was like super dude, last of minute. You no, know, no, and, anytime. I mean, yeah. you're a friend, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone and, and, that uh, I go to Har- Halloween Horror Nights with has has carte blanche. To, th- there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, what we got to do next time in the future. If there's any other big projects that you know that's official, is already announced, I would love to have you on here, and especially from the gaming side too, man. We would love to have you on here and, and talk dude, more totally. about about that stuff, man. Yeah. I cool. can't even remember what I'm working on. But yeah, hopefully something soon at some yeah, point. We'll make yeah. it happen for sure. We'll talk about it. All right. Thanks a lot. Dude, thanks so much. All right.